Hey, welcome back to the channel. I got that line from one of my favorite YouTube channels, Kenny KO. Talks a lot about a lot of, a lot of funny stuff. Funny dude, really uh, entertaining. Uh, last week, I got a call from one of my really close friends, and wasn't a great call. You could tell he was banged up. Uh, he was talking about being in in bed with back pain and leg pain, and really struggling even to sit up on the side of the bed. Probably irrelevant as to what contributed to it because ultimately we'll never know. That being said, he was in bad shape. He was even able to get some heavy duty medication that did help him get to bed, get some sleep. We did look at some unloading techniques that his wife was able to set him up with. We looked to the couch to grab some of the bigger, thicker pillows to place under his hips and knees to try to get as close to a 90-90 hook line position in bed, uh, looking to deload a little bit of those neural arches, assuming that this even was something that was coming from his spine, whether it was a disc, nerve root compression, etc. Things just did not go well. Nothing, nothing relieved over the next probably 18, 24 hours. The, the correct decision was to go to the emergency room. I completely supported that and actually insisted that you're even allowed to call 911 when back pain is not, or any kind of orthopedic pain is not allowing you to take care of yourself, meaning get around in bed or even get to the bathroom under reasonably uh, circum reasonable circumstances. So a little bit fast forward, MRI uh, did indicate uh, some that, that was articulated to me as one to possibly two disc bulges. So let's talk about that for a minute. Now, as I, uh, and this is a very, very close friend, so I was able to communicate very freely, but even in this situation, I said, look, I am not there, and I'm not the radiologist, but let's just talk about some things, because a lot of times what the, the surgeon will communicate to a patient is, They'll use words that are very, very comfortable and easy to understand when in fact, I think for those of us that, that do have a more uh, deeper understanding of what a radiology report can tell us, disc bulge probably doesn't always equate to someone who simply can't move. Now we also know that in these different uh, situations, how someone perceives any given pathoanatomy can be different for different people. So that being said, I did, uh, I did uh, ask my, my friend to, to have some considerations before they decided on a surgical procedure because bottom line, if I were to use the terminology of disc bulge, I wouldn't expect that to be an onset of one to two days and, auto and leaving him in these types of symptoms. So maybe the MRI read something that was a little bit more indicative of a surgical procedure or something a lot more serious but they just chose to use those words. And that's why it's very important to always have someone that's going to be able to translate or advocate. And, and, and this is very, very easy for me to do in this particular situation because not being there, I could easily say, I'm not even talking about my friend, I'm not talking about you, because I'm not there and I have no right to question things. But when we talk about words and we're trying to decode information, it's, it's, it's very, very important. And that's really what, what I try and do, because it's obvious that I see a lot of people one and done. And it's not because there's this magical fix and they're doing cartwheels after they were wheeled in on a gurney. That may happen, uh, not uh, maybe more often than people would like to admit. That being said, the goal on day one is to create a box. It's to create a an advocacy for the patient and to be able to have them be on equal playing field with everyone involved in their healthcare, where they know what they should be doing, they know what they could be receiving, and they're not going to be in debt, in social debt to any uh, of their providers, myself included. I like to be able to say on day one, we are completely equal. I just know what to do about it. And I'll even tell you that as well. So that was one thing that was a little bit interesting. Now, there was not an opportunity to have epidural, but perhaps the intravenous steroids that 
uh, my buddy was being given in the hospital. Look, if they're not even going to make a dent, then yeah, we probably do need to look to uh, a surgical procedure. And that surgical procedure uh, for him was, was a laminectomy. And I think a lot of times, particularly on the fitness side, we, we, people will say I had back surgery. And a lot of times the word laminectomy comes up and there's some realities that I discussed with him, both positive and maybe not as positive, uh, about a, a laminectomy. And specifically for me, I actually had a date, uh, December 26th, uh, to have a laminectomy. And it's just, uh, hey, shame on me for not being as intelligent as, as I should be in, in some of the training that I did years ago, and maybe a number of contributing factors. Cool thing didn't have it on December 26th, and symptoms have significantly improved. Now, I'm being a little bit more intelligent than I was in my competitive powerlifting days, but uh, nonetheless, I, I have a, a, a closeness to understanding why a surgical procedure that, number one, probably not terribly daunting for a good surgeon to do, and and in the city where my buddy is, we already said, hey, the way we're gonna communicate about this is that you have access to the best spine surgeon in your city, done, it's a wrap. And that's likely the case uh, anyway. So it's really not a, a, a significant, it doesn't take a long time, uh, not terribly involved. And it appears that outcomes, people feel pretty good uh, pretty quickly. And my buddy is roughly one week out of this procedure and clearly significant relief. So whatever was his problem, the procedure was part of the solution. Now, we also know that a lot of people can have any kind of passive procedure, and that may not have been the problem, but the procedure was the solution. He's feeling better. That is what is objective, and that's what's important here. But even though this is a procedure that is, is really is not something that a lot of people should be scared of. There's still reasons why we should do everything possible, including intelligent pharmaceuticals in conjunction with uh, a physician. Maybe it's a non-surgical who's now their wheelhouse is to help you prevent that surgery. I think partnering with different types of spine physicians, some should be surgical and some should be not surgical, and they all should believe in what everybody else believes in because these are all options. Because I want to explain why what, what appears to be a fairly remedial or benign orthopedic surgery can still be uh, very, very... Uh, um, impactful down the road. Lots of people seem to do pretty well with these laminectomies in the short term, and then the patient gets blamed, and I don't know if blame is the wrong word, but it's not necessarily negative, that a few years later there's another procedure that is a little bit more daunting, and, and they would say, well, you, it wasn't because the laminectomy failed, it was because you didn't do this, this, and this. So I think that's actually true. The, the individual's fitness and the strategies that they use to stabilize their spine is the reason that the first procedure needed to be adjusted or needed, needed something else. Now, I think that's true to a degree, but let's understand why a little bit. So what I wanna do is show you uh, on the whiteboard what the spine looks like and then give you an illustration that I think helped my buddy understand what the surgeon was doing to him so that he could look the surgeon in the eye and know exactly what he was doing to his body, why he was doing it, how it was supposed to help, but maybe why in the long term there could be some things that he's gonna to have to work really hard for to, to uh, minimize his exposure to a second procedure. So we're gonna start up here and we're gonna draw this circle and that is going to represent the body of the vertebrae. Now, the vertebrae have relatively the same shape but they definitely change some of their accents from the lumbar area to the thoracic to the cervical and the sacral area below the lumbar, still actually, they're just fused and they, they all have unique differences, but relatively the same and they're stacked on top of each other like a big puzzle. So uh, now this is a circle and our disc would live, our disc would live in here, okay? Now there's, there's a bone that goes on each side, right and left. 
there's another bone that goes right and left to create this V. Now inside of here is our spinal cord and lots of nerves that come off. Now these bones stack on top of each other and create tunnels for the nerves to come off this way. Okay? And now you have a bone that sits out here. That, those are called the transverse process. And you have a bone that sits there. That's when you poke somebody in the back and you can feel a bone. That's called the spinous process. Now in a healthy looking spine, like what we see here of a lumbar, they're stacked on top of each other. The vertebrae will change as we go north and they, they, the shape and the accents and, and different features will still be relatively the same, but you'll know, okay, that is a thoracic uh, vertebrae, this is a cervical, this here is, is lumbar. Now, what, what we are expecting to see is that if you remove one of the lamina, these two pieces of bone are called the pedicle, and these two are called the lamina. There's one on the right and the left. So let's say I just, I just randomly drew that. Now you'll see if I take away the lamina, now there's a lot more room for that nerve where maybe it was uh, part of the space. Now there's more space, now that nerve is not being compressed or maybe it wasn't even being touched, uh, and, and which is often the case. But I like to think of some of these pathoanatomical situations are like, are like uh, lightsabers in Star Wars, where you know when the two lightsabers touch, they make those sounds. <laughs> and uh, sometimes though, when they get really, really close, they make a little bit different sound. So when the body senses things are getting too close, it triggers this whole cascade of how we perceive pain. But there's really not always something touching things. They're just getting close and the body senses that. I think that's a very surface level, I don't like to say lay, a surface level explanation. Nothing is exactly how I'm describing it, but it's to give illustration to understand for patients or clients so that they're not in debt and you're not, they're not just a piece of meat that somebody's doing something to with the hope that they're going to help. When you go to the store, you know what you want to buy, you go right to the aisle, you get it. Healthcare isn't like that and I think we could get closer to that. We rely on the expertise of these folks, but we should still have a, no, there's no reason we can't know everything that they know. We just don't do what they do. Now here's the thing. Think of the, I said that this is the, the vertebrae are all stacked on top of each other. And there's significant amounts of connective tissue and muscle that are here. There's connective tissue and muscle, not so much muscle here. There's connective tissue here, all very, very thick ligaments. The spine is just a, a big giant spider web of lots of structures that help create stability, both passive and active, and there's an ideal joint position of centration that allows the muscles around the spine to create very, very efficient stabilization. And then all of these different structures, the ligaments, all of the different bones and the shapes and the structures, they all are involved in a, in a concept that can be described as tensegrity. And what tensegrity illustrates is that when you put compression in a particular direction, the entire system, the entire system will react. And that's very, very positive so that if one structure is missing in that system, then the whole thing doesn't collapse. But so then what's the problem here? Well, here it is. I want you to think of the game Jenga and you stack a whole bunch of different pieces all on top of each other and it's time to start pulling them out. Now, we know that you can pull something out from the bottom. Let's think of that as the lumbar spine since it's, it's now supporting all these other structures. You pull it out and it doesn't fall. But after you pull something out from the bottom, the entire system is going to react differently. And it is not nearly as resilient and stable control in the presence of change as soon as you take out that one little piece. So there's a significant reason to have very, very keen evaluation, to have very, very keen mobility and stability, motor control, and then have significant amounts of fitness. This is why a, these different types of decompression procedures in the cervical spine, or even the more aggressive surgeries, they typically, don't, they typically have a better, longer term result. There isn't always a second surgery. For a lot of the folks that I'm familiar with, 
in professional wrestling. They come back. They come back and take spears and jump off ladders after they've even had a fusion in the cervical spine. Because think of Jenga. If you do something unique up top, it may not impact the layers below. But when you do something very, very easy and very, very simple at the bottom, now everything is going to be impacted. Now, this isn't a death sentence, not in any way. However, we're gonna to need to really be very, very keen with our training and all that comes along with that simply because we took out this one little piece and often that one little piece is absolutely necessary. My buddy made the absolute right decision. He had the best surgeon and he's already very, very happy. But he also knows he's got some work ahead of him and he went into the situation knowing that. I, I think uh, the spine is, is probably a much more stable system than Jenga but I think it helps us understand why all of a sudden people are doing very, very well with these lumbar laminectomies, and then all of a sudden there's something else that's going on. We're gonna get uh, my buddy trained up real well, and I don't expect that uh, there'll be a, a second procedure uh, in his future if we, can, uh, really nail, if we can really nail this down. So concepts of tensegrity, concepts of understanding uh, these procedures. Some people just don't want to know. They're like, F it. Just, just do what you do and make me feel better. I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. But when people aren't sure that they're actually moving in the right process, in the right direction, I don't think there's anything wrong with giving people explanations uh, and, and giving them illustrations and communicating with their surgeon and holding them accountable and the best surgeons are gonna love this. The best surgeons, uh, that are, they're, they're really gonna feel very, very, they're gonna feel more comfortable working with you when I think that they, they know that, hey, this guy actually knows what he's talking about, his questions are reasonable, and it's gonna make me feel even more confident in doing what I do now that I know that this is not just a passive partner, this is an active partner, and he's gonna hold me accountable. I think you'll find that the best surgeons do act like that, and the punks are the ones that probably give you a lot of trouble and try to pull rank. Uh, when you can find anybody who doesn't try and pull rank uh, and, and, and really lets uh, the system guide who, who calls the shots and who carries the football is really something. And I think this situation is one that, that can illustrate that. So hopefully this makes sense and I'm really excited. Uh, very, very, another week or two, we'll probably connect with my buddy and, and start to analyze, you know, okay, how'd this happen? What, what contributed above and below? And, and run, run a keen evaluation process, manages fitness, manages recreation through golf, and, and we're gonna be after it.